Welcome back to my channel. I'm Karen, a pastry chef in Jakarta, and in this video, we are not cooking, but I'm taking you on a tour of the edible balcony garden. gardening back in February 2021. So far, I've learned a lot, failed a lot, and definitely there is more for me to improve on, discover. In this tour, I will show you guys what I've been growing and what does not work, how I feed my plants, how to make good use of limited space, and share some lessons with you. So the size of this balcony, I would say, is around 5 by 1.5 meters. And it's not super small, but it is still limited space. It is northwest facing, and it gets full afternoon sun. When I first moved in, it was it was more of a morning sun and then as the year moved on, it became afternoon sun. And the best part of this balcony is it has no water sauce so I actually have to lug jugs of water from inside the apartment out here and water will be dripping everywhere. So the most effective system I have discovered is using this water tank, filling it up with a hose which is very risky and prone to accidents. So initially, I started out with a hydroponic tower and it was really magical to see it grow with just using water and nutrients and no soil. However, it kept getting blown off by the wind and yeah, I also didn't like the plasticky white look it had. I also wanted to expand the types of plants that I grew so then I started first with this vertical garden and coincidentally, it fits perfectly in this space. Next, I bought pots that were able to fit the ledge perfectly. Somehow, I just found these rectangular pots and it fits. And I thought this would be more aesthetically pleasing as well instead of having different sizes of round pots everywhere which would make quite a mess. And this also frees up a lot of walking space so I still can use this to hang out, sit on this table. And at first, I thought that it would be really cool to grow tomatoes all around this whole area. Just vine it all around back and forth like that but clearly that plan did not work out and I ventured out to other vegetables to grow in each pot so right now what you see here are plants that have been growing in this pot for two months or so so they are actually quite bushy and some are actually ready to harvest and come it's gonna work so starting from this corner is the kangkung and it is ready for its first harvest a lot of people tell me that this is not a good vegetable to eat because it has parasites and uric acid if I'm not wrong. However, since I'm growing it on my own, it should be fine, right? I'm not sure. Please comment down below and let me know if it's good for you or not because I really like this vegetable. And on this same pot, I planted two random sunflowers as I was sprouting them to eat. And I honestly did not know that there were many types of sunflower before this guy came out. I was expecting the full big head ones. Right above that is a ledge that I used to put some little seedlings. And this is a baby coriander that took forever to grow. This is a lemon tree. I'm not sure if it actually will work, but it's been growing well. Look at the new leaves it's been putting out. and weird weird lettuce weird so weird weird clearly does not look like a lettuce it is super funky looking i have no idea why it keeps doing this i think it's what you call bolting or i don't know it's leggy because there's not enough sunlight but i'm really not sure so i'm just trying to wait for it to see and then I can take these seeds and hopefully those are more adapted to this environment. I'm not sure, but hopefully that works. And right next to those is the watermelon that's going all the way down. And these are the flowers. This could be a baby. Hopefully it doesn't dry out. Moving on are the cucumbers, which is growing really wild. 
And I have like this beautiful cucumber growing, same as the eggplant, cucumber, and watermelon. All the flowers seem to be flowering and looking pretty one day and the next day they just wilt and die. And I'm really not sure. I think it's probably something to do with my watering, like not enough or not consistent enough. I don't know, but I'm still figuring it out. See, they give me these babies, which is like really hard and prickly. See, there's more here. But yeah, they just dry out and gives me that. This is a mulberry tree, mulberry bush that has been giving me a lot of problems honestly. And if you can see, there is a little guy there. But yeah, usually it's like that and then it'll drop off and die. So right behind me is some eggplant that I'm growing. I don't think it's really doing well. I'm not sure like the flowers just keep dropping off and the leaves are turning this weird yellow thing. I'm not sure. And this is my favorite. Ginseng java is like growing. Insane. I just harvested this like last week and it grew out so much again. And it pops up really cute flowers too. Here is my tail. It looks super bushy. But I don't know, somehow it just doesn't want to stand on its own. And in this section, we have some young tomatoes that just popped its first flower buds. Above the tomatoes is a ledge, so I'm just using that space for more seedlings here. And in the vertical section, we have all the stir-fried greens, some lettuces as well. So there's this vegetable that confuses me here and it's called sawi. I am trying to grow white cabbage, but every time I get sawi seeds, somehow it turns out like this, pokey and spiky, which is not what it's supposed to look like, or otherwise it looks like this long stalk, which also does not look like it. And Apparently, there are many different types of sawi, but all my seeds are mixed up in one bag called sawi, so that's great! If you notice, I plant the plant right at the edge of the pot and water from this pot will drip down there. I used to have more plants in here, then I realized that they always get soggy, so then I push them out like that. So now they grow outwards and they don't get soggy inside, if that makes sense. These are some celery and spring onions and pretty butterfly pea flowers. I'm hoping that these will fill up the wall and go all the way up. And this is a little herb corner I just made. Basil, rosemary and mint seems to be doing well. Kind of stretchy, but don't mind it. This is my unknown section waiting to be adopted. This is also ginseng java, but I bought the wrong kind. It's very gated. Apparently, you can still eat it, so yeah. This is the watering system I have. So this tank is filled. I use this watering can for the bigger pots and the smaller jug and a bottle, which looks disgusting, for the smaller pots. Like I said before, back when I was growing vegetables hydroponically, I found it so magical that, you know, you just put water and nutrients and it grows without soil. And when I moved to this soil media-ish mixture, somehow my plants weren't growing as well. It wasn't as full as it's supposed to be, I guess. So then I decided to incorporate the hydroponic nutrient water system into this whole thing so that is how I water my plants. I added this drip system also for plants that are extremely thirsty and for the vertical garden, I water it as much on top so then it drips all the way down below. And not forgetting the seedlings to get some water. Finally, this is the soil media that I use. It is a mix of coco peat, rice hulls, burnt rice hulls, some vermiculi, compost. I use vermi compost. Yeah, I think that's about it. So a couple of things that I've learned so far are that instead of harvesting whole plants, I pick out the outer leaves. So if you see back there, those are like the stir fry vegetables and I used to be harvesting by taking a whole plant out but these days, I just pick out the outer leaves and that would extend the life of this vegetable and that would also give me less work since I don't have to keep replanting new baby plants on them. 
Previously, I've tried growing coriander, rocket leaf, um, Swiss chards, carrots, and all those just did not work out for me. Most of them just bolted since it got like really really hot in the afternoon here and then it just did not work out. So now I follow what the plant needs instead of what I want. Look how the plants are teaching me how to be humble. Hmm. I also started growing a lot more perennials as they do grow all throughout the year and I don't have to keep replanting them or germinating more seeds and having to repot a lot of things which is less work and more food for me. Such as this kale. or this ginseng java, java ginseng, java ginseng, I don't know. It's really good and it's apparently very nutritious for you. So yeah, I love it. And another important thing is to actually find space for all your gardening paraphernalia and all that. I used to think it was just like a watering can and that's all you need, but things accumulate so fast. like. You need those trellises and then you need, I don't know, like a lot of things. So yeah, make sure you have space. Alright, that wraps up the tour of the edible balcony garden. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoy being here. It gives me such a sense of fulfillment to be eating what I grow. And it feels really good that I don't have to buy any of these in the store anymore because I know that I'm getting it fresh. I know how it is grown. And if you guys have any advice for me, a novice gardener, it would be more than welcome. Please let me know in the comment section how I can improve this space. And if you guys have any questions or need any help, I would be more than happy to. Just comment down below, let me know. And as usual, if you like this video, give it a good like. Hit that subscribe button if you have not. And I'll see you in the next one.